What advice you have for the younger people? Listen, peace and love. Uh huh. Help. Okay. Look out for each other. That's right. Uh, no fighting. That's no, right. Try to communicate. Right. Communication is very important. Very important. When you feel something, say it. Do not keep it. Amen. Happy birthday, Mama Eve. Appreciate you. Shout out my mom, this is for you, we gonna go harder. So we gonna look at this a year from now, we gonna take it to the next level. Yo, what is going on right now? When John blows up, <laughs> he blows up. Yeah, yes. <laughs> me and Mike had our first official blowout. You blowing this <laughs> shit down. Yeah. You, taking every, you taking everything down with you. I'm like, <laughs> I didn't know you felt this way. Do you get now, like with Last Flight Out, that now when people say it, it doesn't sound weird anymore? Everybody was like, is that a travel? podcast yeah. something like that now they listen and know it's like they get the concept it's not a travel podcast <laughs> i think this season we're just gonna take it to another level back yeah season two let's flat out big team big boys all right my highs and lows and hairy growth mr deeds went from juggling three jobs to ceo like i'm steve never been a rotten apple call me john apple c that's how i bleed god can see no other man can judge me. Call a mic, Mr. International, getting cream. I said the mother told me worth it, now I'm worth everything. Went from Wall Street to Abu Dhabi, straight rolling in a Maserati with women that feel exotic. My life too pristine. Man, you didn't have to do them like that, man. You didn't have to do them like that. It was film day. <laughs> yeah. We gotta we gotta make a statement. Exactly. We gotta make a statement. Last flight out, flight out, flight out, flight out. Welcome back to the Last Flat Out Podcast, where your hosts, Mike and Jay. Hit that like button, hit that share button, and subscribe to the YouTube channel for the LFO boys. And follow us across all our social media channels where we can be found at Last Flat Out Podcast, except on X, where we can be found at LFO Podcast. I'm your host, Jay. You can find me at jlubriel26 across all of my social media platforms, and you can follow Mike at... If Mike was here. Mike, we back in the sandbox, man. Back. <laughs> yeah, season two, and it's been it's been kind of wild, man. Now we got acclimated sort of to the nice weather here. It's a yeah. little. Co it's been actually a little cold here in, in Dubai. It has, it has. It's like I'm, uh, <laughs> you got little... the sweater going yeah, on. It's, it's true. going on, man. <laughs> um, but let's just jump right into it, man. Um, so at the end of last season, you kind of gave everybody um, a sort of a reason as to why you maybe disappeared towards the tail end of, uh, of season one. Yeah. And there's been an update that you like to give the audience. So uh, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. All right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, last season, um, I missed the, what, one or two episodes or something yeah. like that. Wasn't really active on social media. Um, and I just took that time because, uh, you know, it was probably the, the worst it is the worst time that I've had in my life. You know, um, I lost my mother. Uh, rest in peace rest to in my peace. mom, uh, Evelyn Benitez, a.k.a. Bad Mama E. So <laughs> I know she... <laughs> man, based, I never met her, man, yeah. but based upon the videos and photos that you sent me, you, I could tell where you get your personality from. Yeah, yeah she's definitely. She seemed like a, a, a very fun woman to be around. Lots of energy, lots of life, and even... Yeah. So yeah. always positive, live life to the fullest and all that. So, um, yeah, the reason why I'm here now and continuing on is, you know, because of her. She's that driving force that when I think about giving up, it's like, all right, she won't want that. You know, she's in my air like you better live it up. You got your chance. So so do it to the max. Um, so and she passed away from uh, colon cancer. So that was a, you know, a tough disease to like witness firsthand. Um, she actually passed away in my arms and all that. So, um, yeah, it was a traumatic moment, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, mm -hmm. Blessed to have a, you know, a job that allowed me to be there for her every step of the way, even from last year when she got diagnosed to um, her final um, months on this earth. So I'm happy um, for that. Once again, thank you, too, for covering the podcast <laughs> nah, and things man. like that. It's the least you know, I could have done so that you could really have your moment it. with your family, man. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, I just want to take this segment to just talk about colon cancer, because before this and seeing it up close and personal, it's a lot of attention um, gets drawn to maybe for women, breast cancer, pink is the sign for men. I feel like it's prostate cancer prostate and all cancer, that. Yeah. Um, you don't hear too much about colon cancer or I, or I didn't. I don't think it gets enough um you know, publicity. Uh, the, the color for, co for colorectal cancer is actually uh, navy blue. Oh, really? And then the awareness month is March. 
So, okay, cool. So yeah, so definitely, um, you know, this year I'm just trying to observe on what I can do to raise awareness, even raise money. Um, but I'm just sent back on it and really just, I'm using, we have a platform. So I'll take this segment just to let people know to get screened, you know. Also, you never know with this piece of advice, somebody might go get screened and yeah, yeah. catch it early and they may, they may have caused something because of this podcast. So. Yeah. And just, just to let everyone know, like um, certain, like, I'm just going to run off a um, couple of facts and then I just want to go off my experience as well. So um, uh, what is it? Colorectal cancer is the second deadliest and the fourth most common cancer in the U.S. Um, we're in the UAE. It's the number one uh, cancer death in the UAE. For men or for? Uh, for, for men and women. Damn. Yep. Um, most people are diagnosed uh, with colorectal cancer um, after the age of 50, um, but the rate of but the rate of young onset uh, CRC is affecting young people is rising. So um, get checked early, especially if you have family history. Uh, they say 45 is the age. In the UAE, they're trying to push it to 40 because of the lifestyle. Like mostly if you're eating processed meats, a lot of red meats, you you're obese and you smoke, yeah. um, you're more likely susceptible for that. And especially if you have a family history of that, um, get, tested, get tested early. Sure. Um, and the biggest way to prevent uh, colon cancer is early screening, early detection. Right. Um, there is no uh, symptoms of, of colon cancer. For the most part, 95%, once you start feeling uh, symptoms, or even probably higher than that, once you start feeling symptoms, it's probably already too late. It's probably stage four, stage three. So the best thing that they recommend is, uh, is just early detection, early screening. Uh, so a couple of things, non-Hispanic black people have the second highest mortality rate and the second highest incidence rate of CRC in the U.S. Um, American Indian and Alaska and Alaskan Native, Native American communities face the highest mortality and incidence, incidence rates as well. Um, once again, it develops without symptoms. When present, symptoms may include blood in, blood in or on stool, persistent unusual bowel movements like constipation or diarrhea, stomach pain, aches, or cramps that don't go away, losing weight for no reason. Colorectal cancer starts with an abnormal tissue growth, which is called uh, a, poly, a polyp, and uh, inside the colon or the rectum. With the help of screening tests, doctors can find polyps and remove them, which prevents colorectal cancer from, de from developing. Colorectal cancer found early has a 91% survival rate. And just sort of, I guess, from your experience, when your mother was going through this, was did she got she got tested because I think something happened to her right on her birthday, I think, or around her birthday? Yeah, that's the well, she, she didn't get tested. So it just so happens that it was a side effect or a symptom. Okay. Then she went into the hospital, and that's when, after further testing. Then that's when they discovered it. Okay. Yeah, but it was a, it was like a domino effect it of something else ha effect. happening. Okay. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's it's and it's one of those. I mean, it's it's an aggressive cancer that once you get diagnosed, the stats are you know you may have months or you know. Anywhere from what four months to to uh, two years to live, you know, and uh, you know, chemo is very up and down. Uh, they say chemo prolongs life, but it's a it's a tough battle when you're going through chemo, and I've seen that firsthand. So um, my recommendation, and I'm actually going to get screened uh, myself. So, and the best way to get screened is you have to do a. They have various methods they have stool testing but they also have colonoscopies so i'm going to do that process i might think about just um documenting that and putting that out or something like that yeah. but um a lot of people are, are afraid to get tested and it's like you know um it's the from what i've heard i've had my family that's got it done and it says the easiest thing you, if you get a colonoscopy you're not even awake during it no you know, so. I think I think people are more scared of the result rather than the whole procedure process, right? Like, yeah. you know, when you're waiting for a test result, there's always that anxiety right beforehand, whether it's an academic test or a physical test or a health test. You just want to make sure everything's clear, right, and good to go. But yeah, I, my dad is in his fifties now, and he he's doing colonoscopies now. And you know, I'm a little bit more on the younger side, 33, but definitely at 35, 
34. That's something that I'll definitely be searching to do. And there's so many tests now that test for so many different diseases and, exactly. and cancers now. I think there's so much information out there that you you kind of have to do it, right? Like yeah. you kind you gotta you get caught up in this lifestyle here in the UAE sometimes, or an expat wherever you're at. That sometimes you don't even check on your own health, right? Yeah. In London, people don't have preve it's not preventative measures there, like you know, because it's the NHS is public, you know, public health service. So people go there when something's wrong, yeah. right? As opposed to in America, where people go to prevent things. Yeah, and a lot of times this. Um, you know, most people say if you if you feel good, you're not really going to the doctor. You know, yeah. And I try I try to get yearly checkups yeah, on me everything. Too. You know, I, <laughs> I remember going to London uh, when I lived in London, and yeah. I went to they have called a GP there, so you're a okay. general practitioner. Yeah. So it's basically your your general doctor back in the U.S. Yeah. And I had went there, and I told the doctor that I wanted to just get my yearly checkup, and the doctor looked at me saying, "We don't." to do that here. There has to be a reason why you're here. So I had to kind of like have a call for something. <laughs> I, <guess> something. <laughs> I want to get this blood work done. I want to make sure I'm good. I don't want to wait till seven years down the line and I find exactly. out something's wrong. Look, um, I know that's what people in Britain do or in the UK, but definitely I have my American medicine. I go to the doctor every year. I make sure everything's good. I don't want to get any surprises, right? Exactly. exactly. Especially when it's preventable. Yeah, if something's preventable, let's, let's do it. And it's just some of the things you could do. Um, uh, you know, um, I, I guess whoever's watching, j definitely just go get tested, um, you know, get a colonoscopy. If you're of that age, if you have a family history, um, go get that done, as well as just help raise awareness. Post on, post on social media. It doesn't have to be the Cancer Awareness Month. Just, you know, if you can, just spread the word um, to just go get tested, as well as if there's any events um, in your area, um, you know, this week I'm actually, I signed up for the, uh, cancer battle challenge, yeah. um, where you raise money. I think it's what every rep is like it's five dirhams, five dirhams yeah. and all that. I'm out of shape, but I got the strength from my mom. So yeah, let's see how much money I through, raise. Man. You know? I'm, I'm going to try by the time this episode drops with this will be long done yeah, by yeah. then, but, um, I'm going to definitely try to make it, um, just to show you a little bit of support. I'm definitely yeah. out of shape too. Yeah. I got a bad hip, so <laughs> I'm going to definitely ask for those modifications. So I'm like, I really need those modifications on those workouts, but I just think it's a it's a matter of just showing you support, man. The, yeah, I appreciate um, it. From from someone who was observing it from afar, you were definitely very resilient. Um, you 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 showed strength that I don't even know most people I know would even be able to go through something like that. Um, I can't imagine what it's like to lose your mother, especially since I know. Um, how close you were to her. You always spoke about her. She came to the UAE multiple times. You went back to the US this year multiple times and you guys did things together. You guys seemed like you guys were genuine friends. Yeah, we right? hung out. And hung you guys out. hung out. Um, yeah. And I think it put it in perspective for me, even with my own family relationships, right? To call my mom, call my grandma, who's 85, and thank God she's with us now, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was back in the US, um, I made sure to see her as much as I can. Um, and I know that there's people who take that sort of closeness pr by proximity to their families for granted. Yeah. Tomorrow's not promised. It's not. It's, it's really not, not promised, right? Yeah. And so the last thing I ever, for me, my biggest fear is ending on a bad note with somebody. Mm -hmm. And that be the last time I have spoken to that person. Yeah. Thankfully, I don't, I don't, I don't, I've never experienced that. But uh, because of that, man, um, you know, my blood, uh, my prayers are with you always. Uh, she's always there with you. You know, we've spoken off camera, so I don't need, I don't want to repeat what I need, what we've spoken about, but just know that your mom's always there. And, yeah. you know, you could have easily just said no to the LFO podcast. And that's the last thing you said. You were like, nope, I'm going to go even harder. And yeah. that's, that's the type of guy that Mike is, man. Yeah. That's the type of guy that Mike is. Definitely, definitely. So, um, yeah, th uh, like I'm glad we just had this segment. So definitely got to shout out my mom. This is for you. We're going to go harder. So we're going to look at this a year from now. We're going to take it to the next level and we always going to rep. And um, each year, I hope my contribution to bringing the awareness to just cancer in general is going to be much bigger. And I hope to use this platform to push that forward, you know, yeah. of just getting tested, raising money for our uh, research and things like that so i look forward um to that of being an advocate and an ally to all cancer um patients and patient survivors as well yeah all cancer and survivors yeah has it i know that you're doing preventative preventative measures now like going to get tested and things yeah. of that nature but have 
you thought about like are you eating consuming less red meat now or are you like being a little extra conscious as to what you what you eat or is there anything that you know that you've yeah, done because so, of it yeah so to be honest man um you know uh in the process of grieving i was just like I was, I'm out of shape right now. I was eating <laughs> whatever, you know, but, happens, um, happens, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting out of that as far as like, you know, I gotta, and I think this is perfect this weekend doing the battle for cancer where it's exercising, being fit to raise money. I think that's going to help a lot. That's going to jumpstart me, um, my, my health journey. And as well as I'm um, definitely like dieting wise, um, I'm not going to consume, um, as much red meat as before definitely not going to eat pork or anything like that right. so um and i'm even thinking about going vegan that's interesting kind yeah. of kind of, <laughs> kind of vegan like yes. Monday through friday <laughs> vegan and then saturday sunday <laughs> back on the saddle so i yeah. um you know uh i think i've let go for the most part dairy yeah um i don't i drink oat milk mm -hmm. almond milk but cow milk tastes so weird to me now it does. It, it, it cut, and like the other day, I went out uh, with my friend uh, from work, mm -hmm. and we got a matcha together. He got a coffee, and I had forgotten to say, "Can I get it with oat milk?" I couldn't yeah. drink it. Couldn't finish it. I had to throw it away. I had to wait till he kind of disappeared to throw it away because he paid for it. But yeah. I had forgotten that it was cow milk, and how much inflammation cow milk causes within you. It's it's incredible, and I've I've felt so so much better after me dropping it. Yeah. You know, when it comes to desserts. <laughs> vegan desserts don't don't hit the same <laughs> as full milk desserts, so I haven't really transitioned there. But vegan ice creams from like Van Leeuwen, I like. Oh yeah, but like, there, no, but like some some other ones, I'll be like, I need the real thing. <laughs> so I'm not yeah. all the way converted, but yeah. I I can be convinced. Yeah, <laughs> but it's crazy how much like food affects your health, and especially coming from the U.S. where things are. You know, red dye forty. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they you got know, a whole they bunch put of steroids junk in there. Yeah. And, <laughs> into the animals and all that. Yeah. So if you can eat as clean as possible, less processed meats, um, you know, um, that's and everything within you know uh, moderation. Right? Moderation, exactly. Right? So like I, I did notice because I came back from the U.S. I was there for almost two months. I, I packed a few pounds, you know, bacon, egg, and cheese, pizza, and stuff like yeah. that. But some of the stuff that I eat there tastes, the same thing tastes so much different here. It does. I, I almost prefer the taste here. Yeah. Because <laughs> what they be putting over there is that ad addictive stuff. Yeah, exactly. Whether it's chips yeah. or whatever. I don't have cravings out here, bro. Man, I swear to McDonald's. <laughs> In the U.S., I don't know what they're putting in the in the. It's a distinctive smell. But it's like this is it so good. You go to the exactly. McDonald's at one four five in Broadway. What? Yeah. Yo, for those who know, you know exactly. <laughs> oh man, but I think um, on this specific segment that we're talking about with colon cancer and awareness and just dealing with death in general, um, though the person I did lose the closest to was my grandpa. Um, no. he was 75 when he left us, but you know, the guy was just full of life. Like he reminded me when I saw those videos of you and your mom, he kind of reminded me of me and my grandpa. Cause my grandpa so full of life, charming, you know, yeah. just, just very always full of life and energy. And I remember that when he passed, he passed the summer when I took the bar exam. Mm -hmm. So right after I graduated and he kind of just passed away and the way that he passed away was just like, you know, I don't want to go into detail, but you know, by himself and just not the way he was as a person. Yeah. And I remember going that summer and thinking to myself like, wow, how am I going to get through this? And I remember, I don't know when you're talking, you know, when you're talking to yourself a little bit, sometimes I'm like, there's no way he stayed here for my graduation because he was supposed to leave a couple months before, but I had told him that I was graduating that, that, that spring. And he said from law school and he's like, oh, well, I'm definitely going to stay. There's yeah. no way that he stayed. You know, what had happened to him, he transitioned and he would have wanted me to not take the bar exam or fail it yeah. because of him, right? Or because of the, the memory. Yeah. So I just went harder, man, that summer. And I went, yeah. I I blew past that exam. It was it felt easy to me that day. It felt like I was put I put up three thousand shots in wait, the gym. So this was so wait, he made it to your graduation. Twenty seventeen. Okay, May. and then, then passed away like literally two like a, two weeks later. Okay. Oh yeah. So that was that energy to you gotta pass yeah, it. Yeah, I gotta you pass this it, man yeah. no matter what. So everything that I do, um I do it with him in my memory. Mm -hmm. Um and try to be like, you know, I'm not I'm not necessarily the most smiley, smiley person, but he he definitely was, man. He was yeah. always cracking jokes and I made sure to line up because life is short. 
It is. He's 75. I'm 33. That means yeah. I got 40 summers left. Yeah. Right? When you put yeah. it like that, it ain't that For much, real. man. And 75 is young. It's young. Not, it's you know what's even... the worst part, man? Like, the guy, if you, I swear to God, you would have, you and him are the same person. You guys mm -hmm. would have had a great time together. He ate what he wanted. He smoked cigarettes. Obviously, he's been smoking cigarettes his entire life. So that's what really did him over. But, you know, when the doctor in typical uh, grandpa fashion, um, you know, shout out to him, may, you know, rest in power. The doctor asked, told him, hey, you'll add like an additional one, two, three years to your life if you stop smoking. He said, F that. I'm going to go out doing what I want to do. Right. <laughs> I was like, I was like, so he, you know, he kind of lived life, you know, by his own drum. And yeah. I've been kind of doing that over the last several years, mm -hmm. just kind of like developing my own beat, not really paying attention to what other people were telling me. Cause I was, I was, I'll be the one to, to admit to you. I was prisoner to other people's opinions of me yeah. uh, and my, their expectations of me. Now I'm kind of like slowly but surely shedding that. I'm not fully at the point where I just don't give an F anymore. Right. Um, I'm not there yet because obviously um, that takes time to, to make those trenches and developments. But I think that sometimes a tragedy, and this is where I'm trying to come back, can sometimes bring a transition in your own life towards something else and introduce yeah. you to another door that you may have not known was there. Um, and what he did for me was kind of what that situation did to me was kind of made me realize that life is short and you got to do whatever the hell makes you happy. You do. You <laughs> right. Do. Because um, I, life I'm not, I can't, I can't live out somebody else's dreams. Right. At the end of the day, we're employees, right? We're making yeah. somebody else rich. Mm hmm. I mean, we're, we're getting paid nice for it, but <laughs> this is, I appreciate what I'm doing here yeah. because this is ours. Exactly. We, we're building this. And I would want to do, you know, Evelyn or Roberto, which is my grandfather, their justice in their, in their name by going as hard as we possibly can doing this. Yeah. Right. It, it's got, so for me, when I think of death now, it kind of puts an urgency to me, like where it's, even sometimes it's like, and death could happen at any time. You know, so it's kind of like I, I don't like putting things on hold as much. Like if I could do something now today, yeah, I'm like, let me do it. You know, a little um, better time than the present, right? Exactly. And then, like you said, I, even with relationships, is if something could be fixed, I'd rather fix it. I don't want to hold the grudge because it's like you're just gonna you're just gonna regret it at the end of the day. You know, especially when you think back and you're like, what was we arguing about? Was it that? Sick? Could a conversation have? Resolve that. Yeah, it's true. You know? So it's true. And uh, speaking about grudges and speaking about arguments, <laughs> I forgot about what we argued about a few days ago, right? Um, so I guess moving on, transitioning Maybe from transition, that segment yeah. to another one. Um, you know, every relationship, healthy ones, they have their fights every once in a while, right, Mike? Yep, <laughs> right. Yep. So, and me and Mike had our first official blowout. <laughs> it was. I just think yeah. it was just a combination of. I was, at least personally for my end, I was working 16 hour week days. I hadn't slept, you know, we're, we're ramping up season two of the podcast. You know, I have to deal with my family obligations. I got to deal with this guy, you know, in a good way. He's a great guy, but um, it's just like, you not know. Not that night. <laughs> not, no, not that night. That night, I think we could have, we could have seriously fought each other that night. It would have been. <laughs> but I think, uh, you know what? You go ahead and describe the situation, what happened. All right. So <laughs> from my point of view, um, we got or or John, he, he he's quarterbacking this opportunity, which is a good opportunity. Yeah. Good opportunity for us. Um, I feel I felt like, um, you know, but you have to give more context. I'm wait, quarterbacking okay. the situation. Right, so, right. It's going to require us to fly somewhere. It's going to require us to fly somewhere far. Yeah. Far. <laughs> not cheap. And soon. And relatively soon. Yeah, and, re and relatively soon. Mind you, I just, so from my point of view, yeah. it's like I'm just coming back from a long flight. I'm jet lagged. I'm just back at work. I'm forgetting my password. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I see he's excited about the opportunity. I, I'm i excited too, but I felt like... Uh, I felt like at the time I said, let me think about it. Because you. this is the most I've seen you excited. You're like, yo, responding right now. Like, yo, <laughs> because we're booking right because, now. Because, you know, like, like, you know what? Like, of course, I was excited about the opportunity because we're a podcast that only has eight episodes. And <laughs> there's people who 
you know, I've seen other uh, other podcasts, and I feel like it's a good opportunity for us. I think people are really messing with our material. Mm-hmm. People are really messing with our content, with us as people. And I think yeah. they want to sit down and, 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 and talk to us, right? So I'm over here like, yo, we got to strike when the iron's hot, right? <laughs> so, yeah, all right, go keep going. Keep yeah, going. mine just like late night. I forgot what time it was. It was like 12, almost yeah, 1 so o'clock he's in the like, morning. You know, I'm like, yo, can we give this a day or two? Like, yo, let me sit back, think about it. Um, I want to I wanna add to that. Let's get some more people. So if we're going to make this trip, let's make it worth it, right. you know? And then... He just blows up on me. And I'm like, anybody, now I'm going to say this, what you say. Anybody that knows John, when John blows up, <laughs> he blows up. Yeah, really, yeah it's <laughs> so, true. That is true. It's that's, not a, bomb, that's, like, not a, like, that's not a surprise to anybody who knows me. When yeah. that's, that's my most biggest terrible <laughs> character trait. When I blow up, it's scorched earth. It's nuclear yeah, bomb. It's like, <laughs> yo, you, you blowing it. Down. <laughs> yeah. he, taking every, he taking everything down with you. I'm like, I didn't know you felt this way. Nah, nah, like, nah. <laughs> yeah. So look, uh, everything that Mike just said, correct, fully correct. So my side of that, my side of the story is that, or at least from my perspective, yeah. the facts are the facts. I did blow up. We did have an argument. We did have an opportunity, which we're taking. Yeah, <laughs> so we're, we're not taking we're it. We're taking the opportunity. <laughs> but... Um, from my perspective, because I was so excited about it, yeah. I was in a point, I was such a, in a, an emotional high because I was like, wow, we're getting this great opportunity to talk to somebody who, you know, we like their we product. Want, we want to talk to them. We yeah, want to talk to this person, yeah. right? So we like their product and I'm excited about it. The person seems excited about it. And Mike is sort of like, ah, uh, <laughs> let's think of, let's, 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 I'm usually the person who's like, oh, let's, 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 yeah. let's pump the brakes. But because I didn't see that Mike was excited about it, I automatically took that mistakenly as him not wanting to do it. Yeah. You and took I'm over it here, as a no. And I'm like, I didn't say I'm no. I'm over so here let's... like, hold on, bro. We, we're building this. We're not in a position where we could just be saying no, especially to these type of artists. But, you know, I did blow up. There were some things that were said um, that, you know, I apologize for um, mm-hmm. that should never be said between between people and you know i never want to i never want mike to ever think that i'm attacking his character or to whoever i've been a victim of my blow-ups it's never about the character it's because i'm so passionate about this and we're both very passionate yeah, we right we're both very passionate about this we're putting our all into this we're we're like literally taking this out of our own pockets we're trying to make this happen no matter what right but i think my perspective and what i learned from that is that sometimes you're right. Sometimes the same way you've listened to me, and when I said, yo, let's slow down and let's like think about this, let's think this through, is the same way I should have listened to you in that scenario. But because I just think it was like one, I was tired. I was like, yo, this guy's, you know, we, we've we've had a bummy week in terms of like some people rejecting us, some people, yeah. like the week before that, I think everybody that we reached out to rejected us and said yeah, no, exactly. right? So <laughs> left us on red, don't respond to emails, yeah. don't respond to text messages. <laughs> so it just felt like, wow, we finally got a W, you feel me? Yeah. Like, and I don't know, like, and at that time, I was like, oh, man, let's let's secure this. And I just felt like, you're right. As the person who heads the creative side of, of the project here, you did want to add more value. How can we make the most out of that trip? How can we add more content? How can we have more value to our audience? How can we more add how, what we can learn from that? Because that would be our first kind of like, you know, yeah. last literally take a last flight out to yeah, see like- somebody, right? <laughs> so I think when it comes to something like that, um, I should have just like slowed down a little bit. I even I I'm not gonna lie. I even so I even spoke to Lindsay about it afterwards. Yeah. Uh, she said, "Babe, that's the first thing she said." Like I literally was like, "I'm," and I literally said, "I f-ed up." I bleeped that out, but it's fine. It's okay. No, like no, I, I literally said that. That's literally what I quoted. I I messed up, and um, because you're my partner, man, and you're my friend, and I, you know, I obviously brothers fight, but yeah. There, I, I just didn't want to get to a situation where it was going to be awkward when we got on stage, but uh, on the, you know, on... Yeah, on the pre-call. On the pre-call, uh, or yeah. we had a pre-call the next day. We we do pre-production yeah. meetings. I didn't want to do that. And so. it's crazy, because, like, it's clicking for us almost. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, we got some other things lined up as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's now, like, damn, right now. Now it's now. clicking. Like, yeah. Now it's clicking. Bef- <laughs> last week, it wasn't like that. <laughs> By the time this episode drops, the week before that fight happened... Stuff was yeah, not clicking. Like, <laughs> it was. It was me and Mike were like, "Yo, what is going on right now? What did exactly. we say?" I was about to revisit all our episodes and be like, "What the hell did we do that was wrong?" <laughs> but then now, you know what? Those were almost blessings in disguise because you know what I always say: 
People don't owe us anything. We've said that from the very beginning. I need to remind myself that people do not owe us anything. Their no. time is not important, more important than ours, right? I understand that. But we're going to get them. Yeah. We're going to get everybody we want on the second lap, third lap, fourth lap, wherever many laps. I got yeah. I got legs for days. I can run. Yeah. I can I can go 30,000 steps right. a day. And I think that's going to be the test for us is the consistency, the longevity. Like we got to be like LeBron James out here. Yeah. Like we got to be able to go season after season. season. And the thing is cuz we're so close to it and we know the work that we're putting in, we know we know the the time that we're putting in, the money that we're putting in, and we're like, why don't they see this? And and especially like and I think what we need to do is like Let's not compare or look at others and like, yo, how did that happen? No, yeah. We do our own thing and our time is going to come. Yeah. What do they say? It takes uh, 10 years to become an overnight success, right? Exactly. So, look, we're putting in a lot of work into this right now. Yeah. Um, and, you know, season two, if you had told me I was going to have a podcast a year ago around this time, I would have been like, you, you're wilding. And I think it's like... Even before this was around the time when we first met and started yeah, thinking about last flight out, yeah. right? So um it wasn't called last flight out there. I mean, yeah. funny story, story time, I guess, presented to you by LFO. <laughs> I I re do you remember the first name that we got excited about and then we found out it was somebody else's name? Was it the bodega? The boys? bodega, boys, yeah, the bodega yeah. boys. Yo, me and Mike, I'll never forget, we were at Jin Bar in Abu Dhabi, right? Mm. And oh the hidden bar, hidden bar, that's mm -hmm. what it's called. Hidden bar, and we were going down. Me and Mike, like, think we brought like what was it, like 50, 60 names, 50 something names. crazy Something that we created that we running off. Chat yeah, GPT, yeah. Like, yo, tell <laughs> yeah. Us, like. <laughs> yeah, you know. So we're over here with 50, 60 names, trying to do everything that we can to find a name for the podcast. Yeah. And we go bodega, and we look at each other like, <laughs> wow, this is clicking. This is, this it. is it. Like, we're lit. Like, we got the name. We got the logo. Copyrighted, we're thinking about, boom. We're thinking about that. We're going to copyright it right there. Yep. We're thinking about the black cat already in the in the store. We're already thinking our logos. We look it up on Google, and it's Desus and, Mer yeah, no. and, Meryl's, and Meryl's stuff. And I forgot. I totally forgot they were the bodega boys. Yeah, me too. Yeah, so. I didn't even know they were because I caught them on the later end. Yeah. And I was like, oh, man. It's one of those things that, like, you know. And then Last Flight Out just seemed natural at the time. Yeah. Do you get now, like, with Last Flight Out, that like, now when people say it, it doesn't sound weird anymore? It's not, nah. it's starting to sound, like, very normal and very, it sounds, like... It sounds natural. Or LFO or yeah. Last Flight Out. It's, like, resonating. People are starting to resonate. Oh, Last Flight Out. Exactly. Mike and Jay. And then I think the concept, too, like, for our listeners, the concept of it, because before, even before we pitched and all that, not even pitched, before we, uh, you know, started producing, everybody was like, is that a travel podcast yeah. something like that yeah. and people that now they listen and know it's like they get the concept, they of get the concept right of that. i remember yeah. getting into an argument with my best friend when he was here in december about it i was like it's not a travel podcast it's not a <laughs> podcast that's convincing people to come to the uae specifically right yeah. if that's what you get out of this oh we'll take cool, you we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll have more friends but mm. the whole point is again taking a flight out of your current situation to go to another destination and what you're traveling through is the risk process, the journey the, exactly. to get to the destination. Yep. Because everyone that we're going to present on this podcast from 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 Denise, from Christiana, to Freak, to the next people we're going to have um, here, have all taken a risk at one point to get to where they're at. And in order for you to appreciate where they are currently, you have to go through the journey with them. And that's, that's what we're right. trying to um, replicate. And that's what we're trying to extract in these conversations, right? Exactly. It's what you can pick up through the journey to apply it to your own journey. Because yeah. I've learned something from all those individuals that yeah. have sat down. And they have had very completely different journeys, yeah, right? And different perspectives. Like, in even we're still building our own journey. And with this, I think one day we're going we're gonna to need to talk about all the stuff that we had to go through with this. With 3M calls, the international calls talking from the UAE to New York City, yeah. the all nights working on, on the editing. The no's, the cancellations, the oh, the no's and the that. cancellations are going to be the ones that stick white with me to yeah. the very end, man. To the very end, um, yeah. and I just think that you know, I guess as a as a closing point, as a lesson learned for me um, from that argument that we had, um, is just sort of be a better, more active listener, right? With the, not just with you, with everybody else I have in my life, right? Yeah. And it's going to also help me on the podcast when we have our guests, because when we have our guest here. It's really about them, yeah. right? And we're just here facilitating a conversation. We're guiding them kind of what we want to know selfishly, you and me, and what we think the audience wants to know. Yeah. But honestly, it just helped me to like really lock in, be an active listener, and make sure that you know we really extract their story. Yeah, definitely. Um, 
my lesson learned in that one as well is just um i mean we're not gonna agree on everything no so at all so <laughs> no. you know it, I, I think some I, and and what i learned too is like sometimes we might need that you know like hey let's talk about this tomorrow you know, and we grew because then we talked about it tomorrow, and then we like even I explained myself better because yeah, sometimes yeah. when you when you hit me with things, I'm just like going off the tongue and all that, and it's like that's not and you was like that's not what you said yesterday, that's like, and you didn't understand. And I'm like I did say that, I'm just saying it in a different way now. Like I had time yeah. to think I, and yeah, all that. You know, you know, sometimes so, it's, it's good to just take a beat because when yeah. you did explain it the next morning. If you came at me like that, I don't think we would work. I, yeah. I completely agree with everything like, that you oh, said. You're like, oh, okay. <laughs> <Is> that, <laughs> I'm like, that's what I was trying to say. <laughs> Maybe because it was 1 a.m. and stuff like yeah. that. Um, but I think that, I think we're going to cut it right there for today. Um, yeah. And, you know, Mike, season two, episode one, if I think you would have told me episode one of season one if we were the guy in here i would have been like let's see how the season goes but i think i see a lot of i think this season we're just gonna take it to another level we're gonna go to different places new heights yeah. um meet new people and network hopefully the lfo name gets out there see cop the merch that'll come out soon coming <laughs> out soon, <laughs> coming out soon. Yeah. Uh, but thanks to the audience seriously for sticking with us for the first season thanks for tuning in again uh please hit the like button Hit the share button. Subscribe to the channel, please. It's gonna. It really helps with the algorithm in this very saturated podcast yeah. market now. <laughs> um, and follow us on social media at Last Flight Out Podcast. And um, you can find me at jlubriel26. If Mike was here. And we'll see you next week, everyone. Same time, same place. Peace. Peace. I like to Man, you didn't have to do them like that, man. You didn't have to do them like that. <laughs> it was film day. Yeah. We got we got to make a statement. Exactly. We got to make a statement. Last one. Let's go. Let's fly out. Let's fly out. Let's fly out.